Welcome back to the channel and as those of y'all that follow this channel know we've been ranking the best burger in the city of Florence and today we got five guys which is not going to be on the ranking and the reason why if y'all been following this as you know is because we're not looking at franchises. That however does bring up a good segue to what today's show is going to be about and I think it's a very very important topic nationally but definitely in our town and towns that I imagine there's probably others like ours out there in the country. So I hope that y'all will follow along because this is um, a really big deal for our community, what I'm about to talk about today. So it has been said to me multiple times by many different people over the years, especially multiple restaurant owners that I've had the opportunity to work with and talk with just over this past year specifically, it's been said to me, and pretty much I quote, the people in Florence only care about franchises and fast food. Well, there's a reason why that stigma exists and there's a reason why having that mentality or that type of culture really is the way to say it. Having that culture is problematic for those that call themselves foodies, like many of y'all. So today we are gonna unpack this issue. And uh, if you stick around and you follow along, I think that we can actually play a role right here today, do something, have another mile marker in the changing of that narrative, which is already changing. With that being said, we do have Five Guys, which is a franchise. To do this correctly, let's set a little background and do a little bit of education. So to start off, for those of y'all that might be wondering, what I got here is a cheeseburger with lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise, ketchup, pickles, and uh, grilled onions, and these are regular Cajun fries, or Cajun fries regular size. For those of you that may not know, I've said it a few times, I've got about a decade of experience um, working in the restaurant industry, both at corporate franchise restaurants and independently owned or mom and pops, as we'll probably say a lot of times in this video. Now, I haven't been in the restaurant industry in about seven years, but I do have that 10 year experience to speak from. So with that being said, let's define exactly what is a franchise because a lot of people probably wouldn't even know the answer to that question. So, a restaurant becomes a franchise whenever the owner of the restaurant takes their brand, takes their template, their formulas, recipes, all, all of it, the whole box of what they do with their restaurant and they sell the rights to operate that same restaurant to someone else. Meaning that if you start a restaurant called Joe's Hamburger Shop, there is a Joe's Hamburgers actually, but anyways, if you start Joe's Hamburger Shop and it's doing really well and you say, man, we could franchise this, you take Joe's Hamburger Shop, the brand logo, the name, the design of the restaurant, the menu, the operations, the way that you do business, the, the, the workflow, everything, and you sell it to John Doe in the next town over and say, you can run your own Joe's Hamburger Shop just pay me a franchise fee and then you'll pay me royalties and you do your thing. And we're going to give you the whole layout and you're going to do it exactly according to the blueprint of how we run a Joe's Hamburger Shop. It becomes a franchise. If you open a Joe's Hamburger Shop in West Florence and then you say, man, we're doing really well. I'm going to open a Joe's Hamburger Shop in South Florence, but I'm still going to run it. My wife's going to help me with the other one and my kids, but we still run the restaurant and own everything. We're not selling the ownership or the operating rights to anybody else. That's still an independently owned restaurant. That's still a mom and pops, even though you have multiple locations. All right, so that's the difference in a franchise and a mom and pops. Now, there are people out there who are vehemently against franchises. And that's because quite frankly, a lot of times franchises disappoint. On the flip side, there are people that are, for whatever the reason, they don't tend to frequent or gravitate towards independently owned restaurants or mom and pops. This is what we've experienced some of in Florence, I believe. And I believe I got a perfect beat on what the reason for that is. And I'm gonna share that here in a moment. But let's just clear the air on some things first. And let's start by highlighting some of the positives of franchises. So for one, for a restaurant to be able to grow to that magnitude, they got to be doing something right. They had to have some kind of product that was good enough. Five Guys started with a family up in Virginia and the product did so well that they've got upwards of 3,000 restaurants globally 
that are either already operating or are in the works of being developed. By all measures, each one is exactly the same because it's a franchise. So the reason that they've been able to have that kind of growth and success is because they got a good product. If we were going to rank franchises, which we're not, in my opinion, this burger would be, I'd put it number two behind Buddies, personally. It could really be a tie that could be interchangeable because some, some people don't like the Smash Burgers. They just don't like them. So if you don't, then I, this would be my recommendation. Secondly, for franchises, they have a national, sometimes global audience. So they're able to try products and get a mass sample size to review of what the responses are for the products that they put out. So when they put stuff out that people like, it's hard to argue with the fact that it's been tested and proven. But there are reasons why there are issues with franchises as opposed to independently owned restaurants. And this is the big thing right here. From somebody who has worked in independently owned restaurants and corporate restaurants, I can tell you that corporate restaurants are a machine. I mean, it, they literally feel like a machine. Everything's so mechanical compared to the experience of being in an independently owned restaurant. And there's a lot of stuff I could say about that, but for the sake of time, I'll just say that even from an employee perspective, corporately owned restaurants or franchises definitely are corporate machines. I mean, it, it feels that way when you're in there. And as you being a, a dining guest, you might say, well, why does that matter to me? Oh, it matters. And I'm going to tell you why. When you have a corporate machine, whether somebody was hired as a manager or they worked their way up, for a lot of the people in those roles in those restaurants, it is in fact just a job. Why? Well, remember, it's a franchise. So everything operates the same way in every one. You do everything according to the blueprint or the model that they've created. So for the most part, there really is no personal touch, no creativity. You're told what to do and you go do it. What this does is create an environment where the norm is, or what you're most frequently going to see, is people that are leading these restaurants, they're confined to certain rules and guidelines, so they're just following directions. They don't really get to put their own creative touch on things. The, the amount of their own personality they can implement on how the restaurant functions is limited, and that creates an environment where it's much more likely that you're gonna experience where people are just going through the motions, if they even like having the job at all, which is just, just reality. Whereas with a privately owned restaurant, again, not always the case, but it's much more frequent where the ownership is typically involved with the management much more closely to some degree if they're not just managing the place themselves, which you also see a lot in independently owned restaurants. And because of all of that, there's much more personality, creativity, individuality tied into the product. And as opposed to it just being a job where a restaurant owner might say, you know what, it's not working out at such and such restaurant, I'm gonna leave, or maybe I got fired, whatever, and I'm gonna just go to another restaurant because I have all this experience, happens all the time. And a mom and pops, this is your whole livelihood. The restaurant is your second home. And it's not because you're there all the time, not from that standpoint, I'm saying literally, either you own the building or you're paying rent there, but even if you pay rent at your house or your apartment, it still feels like your home when you get there. It's, it's the whole vibe of the thing. You have ownership. You're invested on a personal level in your, your soul is tied into what you're doing, not just working to get your paycheck. It's a big difference. And that definitely would certainly translate uh, to the product that you see on the table typically across the nation. So this by and large gives an advantage to mom and pop's restaurants. Also, because corporate franchises are corporate machines, it's all about the bottom line and profits, which business is business. But nonetheless, franchises are frequently more apt to cost cutting measures and really analyzing profit margins and food costs, that kind of thing. So they're sourcing out the cheapest available ingredients that they can find to serve their product. Whereas a mom and pops may be more inclined to source out the best ingredients for their product because everything's hinging on their product. I mean, let's be honest. If you got into the restaurant game, usually, probably not always, but usually it's because you have a passion for food and you get pleasure or satisfaction out of serving people good food. So just logically, you're going to be less likely to cut corners and to cheap out in certain areas where really it pays to have a good product. So we just recently did this video with Victor's that we released a few weeks back. 
and you see that the owner of the restaurant is talking about the quality of the wet aged steaks that they serve at Victor's, well, why did they do that? If it was all just about profit margins, then you just get a cheap steak and cook it well, you know, get a good chef in there to cook it well, whatever. But no, you go get a quality product because you want to serve a quality product. Again, not to say that all franchises are not doing that. I'm just saying that it's more likely that you're going to run across a privately owned restaurant that's sourcing out the best quality ingredients as opposed to a franchise. And I mean, just think about it. You know, in franchise restaurants, say you got like a Chili's or something like that and you live in a town, how many different managers come and go through there over a 10, 15, 20 year period? Meanwhile, you've got some mom and pop's restaurant and Tony has been running the restaurant for 30 years. Why? Because it's his restaurant. It's his entire livelihood. It's, it's one of the major components of his life. For the managers at Chili's, it was just a job. So they come and go as an example. Now, again, this is not to throw corporate uh, restaurant managers or management under the bus. Do not mistake what I'm saying to say, oh, but they're all not invested in what they're doing. Not, not the case at all. I've worked for some great managers in corporate restaurants that put a lot of passion into what they were doing. Not only that, but just to give a shout out to, I don't know his name, but when I was in Five Guys just now, somebody that was clearly to me in a management type role, I don't know if he was GM or what exactly, but because I didn't ask, but I was listening to him talk to his employees. And I picked up on his role because of the things he was saying, uh, just talking about the quality of work, giving some directions and stuff like that. Super good attitude, really sharp. It just seemed like to me, from that one little snippet, that he was doing a fantastic job. And that frequently shows in their product. So again, I'm not throwing franchise managers under the bus. And then not only that, but some of them are, again, bound to whatever the corporate level is doing. They got to follow the rules and the directions. They don't have freedom to make their own decisions in some cases. All right. But yeah, you can see a lot more turnover typically in a franchise restaurant than you do in the independently owned spaces. That also affects product quality. Now, I would say if franchises can execute, they usually have pretty decent menus. There's, I don't think there's a franchise out there that you can't find something that you like at. And as long as they execute that, that particular evening that you go or that day, you're going to be happy because, again, they got these large markets that they get to serve and test their products. Tried and true. But if quality and consistency is what you're looking for, it's not that you can never find it at franchises, but if you're one of these people that is never really investing into your locally owned restaurants, you're shorting yourself. And that takes me to what I want to tell you about our town and how we got to where we are, and then maybe just a little quick snippet of projection of where we're going. I've been connected to this town for the greater majority of the last four decades. I've watched a lot of Florence's development from the late 80s to where we are now. And I can tell you that it's really easy to see a linear path to how this whole stigma got on our town. And I bet there's towns possibly like yours out there that may be in the same condition for possibly the same reason because it's really easy for me to see how this happened. If you rewind the clock back to the early 90s, we didn't have many big names in Florence. We had all these commercials with all these brand names, sometimes maybe... When you're traveling or whatever, you'd get to leave the city and go to another town, maybe Columbia, maybe Myrtle Beach, maybe Charlotte, maybe Atlanta, whatever. And there would be these brand names, these big corporate franchise names that you've seen on TV, that you've heard about. They're really popular. There's a bunch of people in there. And you got to go eat at them, but you come back home, we didn't have them. And then really towards the late 90s, Moving up through the 2000s, we had a lot of development start to take place, especially out on David H. McLeod Boulevard, out by the mall. Obviously, the Florence Center, that brought about a lot of development. That whole area, then all the hotels, it's been an ongoing thing. But the bottom line is a lot of these brands came in. So I remember when Olive Garden came in. I remember when Chili's came in. It's not just restaurants. I remember when Home Depot came in. Same concept. It was a big deal. It's like, man, we're getting a Home Depot. I'm over there all the time, you know? But we're talking about food right now. Wow, we're getting the Chili's. You know, we're getting the Olive Garden. That was a big deal. I mean, people were really excited about that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. In fact, I think there was reason to be excited. I think it's a good thing. I think that any city that's thriving in their food culture probably will have these places because if there's a market for people to go out and eat, 
then naturally these businesses, they have all these analytics, they do all this scouting and all this stuff, they're seeing that. So that's a good indication that there's something healthy there. But I think what happened to us is there was this excitement for these brand names and somewhere in the mix of that, it caused the appreciation for the mom and pops to kind of get drowned out. And so I suspect that a lot of people became so accustomed to going to the brand name restaurant that they're familiar with that they saw no reason. It never even occurred to a lot of people to go to the mom and pops whose name they haven't seen on television they're not familiar with. And then people just got used to it. But what I'm here to tell you is you gotta understand what each person's role is. Each entity has value. The franchises do have value. So Mr. or Miss, I hate all the franchises out there. You gotta lighten up a little bit. They got to where they are for a reason. But at the same time, if you think that Olive Garden, Longhorn, Texas Roadhouse is super popular in Florence and they do a pretty good job, I'm not knocking them, or Chili's whatever is the cream of the crop, you are sadly mistaken, sadly mistaken. And I see a lot of people, especially from a decade of experience working in the restaurant industry, you hear a lot of stuff. People will complain a lot. But if you went into Olive Garden at seven o'clock on a Friday night, but yet you've never even attempted to go to De Massimo's or Stefano's for Italian food with comparable types of dishes, you know, pasta, that kind of stuff, I don't have any sympathy for you. You had a bad experience because you went into a restaurant that was packed, that is a corporate machine. You walked right into it at peak time, competing with everybody else who also is not considering visiting these other places. And so to me, this is me speculating, but it's really twofold. If we were to start to spread it out a little bit more in our community, as you go branch out to explore these locally owned businesses, these independently owned mom and pops restaurants, it'll actually take some of the burden off of these franchises that are struggling to keep their head above water on Friday and Saturday nights. They're gonna do fine. They're still gonna make their money. You're gonna find, wow, there's some pretty good products. In these other places, you're gonna appreciate that. The business owners are gonna appreciate that. And it's actually gonna make the experience at the franchise restaurants a little bit better because it's gonna relieve some of the pressure. Because sometimes at places on David H. McLeod Boulevard, you've got lines wrapped outside of the door. Every Friday or Saturday night, it's like an hour and a half wait. Meanwhile, there's comparable locally owned restaurants that are priced similar where they may not be on a wait at all, or at least it's not as packed as those restaurants are. And what I'm saying is we need to keep working on change in that situation. So think about the things that I've said today. All right, just think about it. This logically, the mom and pops restaurant owner has put his or her entire life into the product. They don't have 3000 locations all over the globe. They just have Joe's Hamburger Shop. And if you go in there and the vibe feels upbeat and friendly and laid back, it's because it is. They're having a good time. They're not going through motions. They're there to serve. Everybody may have an off day, whatever. It's not the point. I'm just saying as a norm, but yet you're still gonna have your favorites at the franchises also. I have my favorites. I got go-to stuff at Olive Garden. I'm not hating on Olive Garden, but I certainly know if I want the best Italian food locally, I'm not gonna go to Olive Garden for that. I'm gonna put my expectation at what Olive Garden does well, and I'm gonna go enjoy it. And I'm gonna get a black tie mousse uh, to take home most likely, because I'm not gonna be able to eat it there because I'm gonna be full already. I've been eating that since I was a kid. That thing is fantastic. There's a reason why it stays on their menu. Just had one last week. Kind of want to go get one now that I'm thinking about it. I'm going to tell y'all this and then we're pretty much done. So hopefully everything got communicated. I was hoping would get communicated in this video. The food scene in Florence is changing. I've had multiple people make that comment to me. But even when I push back a little bit on that, and even as a little bit of time passes, I think even they, the people that have made such comments to me, would acknowledge it's changing. And to each one of the mom and pops independently owned and operated restaurant owners out there in our community. I just want to tell you that we appreciate you. I just want you to know that there's a whole community of Florence foodies that support you guys and that want to see you do well. And uh, we just appreciate having your business here. And the last thing I'll say with that being said is this, if you're watching this video and you're saying to yourself, well, you know what, when I go out to eat, I normally will go to a brand name that I'm familiar with. In Florence, it's going to be not counting fast food, Olive Garden, Longhorn, Texas Roadhouse, Outback Steakhouse, Mellow Mushroom, Chili's, those restaurants, the big brand restaurants. I wanna encourage you to start branching out and trying some of these places. So what I'm gonna do is at the end of this video, I'm gonna slowly scroll as many independently owned restaurants in Florence as I can think of on the screen. So it's gonna scroll up like that. And that way you can pause, whatever, jot it down. You can Google those restaurants 
get their hours of business, get their phone number to call them, look their menu up, uh, but most importantly, get the address so that you can go over there and check them out. And let me know what you find out. If you branch out and try something different from one of these places, let us know how it goes. And listen, restaurants are hit or miss as a whole. I don't care if it's corporate. I don't care if it's, there's only, it's the only one that exists and it's a gem of a restaurant. Food is finicky to an extent. There's a lot of variables. So just understand that at any restaurant, at any given time, you can have a bad experience. And it's not anybody's fault. It doesn't mean the place is garbage. It's none of that. It just happens. I promise you from 10 years of experience in that industry, back of the house and front of the house, I'm telling you, you can't be on your A game and have your best performance every single time. Not possible. So you got to have a little grace and a little patience, but realistically, after a visit or two, you should have a pretty good idea of what they do well over there and what they're capable of. Also, Shout out to Five Guys. Shout out to all the corporate restaurants that are in town that are serving us food. Shout out to all the managers that are running those restaurants. I know you guys are working hard. It's a tough gig. I've been there and I don't want you to feel like I'm taking any shots on y'all because I'm not. We appreciate y'all as well. So with that being said, if you like this video, please give it a like. It really helps us out a lot. We really appreciate it. Also right now, only about 40% of y'all that watch these videos are actually subscribed to the channel. So I'm not trying to be aggravating and saying it. I'm just saying that if you hit that subscribe button down there at the bottom, sometimes people forget. It's a simple thing to do that really helps support the channel a lot and helps us to make future content. With that being said, I look forward to seeing y'all out and about at the corporate and the independently owned restaurants in our city and any other city that I stop in. But in the meantime, y'all take care and we will see you on the next video.